School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by the Alberta Canola Producers Commission. There's, we're expecting that sclerotinia is going to be a bit of a, an issue this year. We've already had certain reports in some of the more advanced fields in Alberta that there is sclerotinia already kind of uh, starting. Obviously, this field is too early for sclerotinia, um, but when is the right time to start to sort of be scouting? Well, this would be an okay time to start scouting for other disease issues. So checking your establishment, seeing if you have any any root rot issues, rhizoctonia, wire stem, that type of thing. Um, we'd also be checking the leaves and seeing if there's any sign of black leg at the early stage. Um, but really, in terms of sclerotinia scouting, we won't start thinking about that until the crop is much farther along and getting towards the flowering stage. Um, there's some differences between scouting for sclerotinia and scouting for these other diseases like black leg, and that is because with, by the time you see symptoms of sclerotinia, it's too late to spray. And um, this is because the pathogen really only has one disease cycle per year, so we have to stop the disease at the beginning of its cycles before it gets to the point that we're seeing symptoms. Um, with a disease like black leg, if you see early symptoms and you see um, those lesions with the pycnidia forming, this is a sign that the pathogen could be producing additional um, spore cycles. And so if you can um, target some type of management to prevent the disease from spreading, um, then those early signs are really telling you that um, you know, it could be something to start thinking about with disease management. But with sclerotinia, wait till the flowering stage. Um, then so you'd want to be thinking about spraying at the 20 to 50 percent bloom stage so early flowering start um, looking at the weather conditions looking at what you think your crop value will be like if it's worth spraying and uh, kind of looking at the past weather and the weather forecast and then you can even be looking in the soil and checking for signs of the sclerotinia pathogen itself so those sclerotia bodies um, when they have enough moisture they'll germinate to produce these mushroom like structures called apothecia those release the spores that will infect the petals of the canola plant and cause the sclerotinia later on. So it's a, you know, thinking more about the disease cycle. So when we're dealing with a, a preventative management plant instead of a reactive, is it, is it really a guessing game as far as if you need to spray or not? Well, you can certainly look at your past experience um, on your farm and in your region when it comes to sclerotinia. We know that when we've had some more wet years that we've seen higher incidence of sclerotinia in general and in other crops as well, other broadleaf crops. So if you've had a history of the disease in, in any of your broadleaf crops, then you'll definitely be thinking about that disease. But I mean, the weather is uh, a guessing game because when it comes to predicting disease, the best way to predict our disease forecast is to have a good weather forecast. And so the farther out that we are from that flowering stage, the harder it is to guess whether it will become an issue or not. But when we look at the weather that we do receive around the time of flowering, we can get a much better idea if it is, um, if there's some wet conditions around that time. Um, whether that be rain or maybe we just have a really thick crop and it's really moist under the crop canopy, then we can better predict that, yeah, we're, it's likely to, to have more of a disease issue. So when the petals are dropping with sclerotinia, do they, does it need to land on the, for sure, like on the crotch or can it, if it lands on the ground, do we don't have to worry? Um, it really does need to land on some part of the plant in order to for the infection to spread. So what happens is that petal will initially become infected through those ascospores and the ascospores will use the nutrients in the petal in order to basically become stronger as the pathogen is progressing. So um, it'll use that as an initial nutrient source. The petal must land on another part of the plant in order to directly penetrate into that part of the plant. So on a leaf or onto the stem, um, somewhere else that it can get into to the plant and then continue to spread and then it'll feed on that part of the, the plant as it continues on. So can you have petal drop without the infection? Um, I guess if the if none of the petals landed on the plant then it really isn't going to do much once it hits the ground. But Low probability a, of that. <laughs> yeah there's so many petals and there's so much plant material in the way as they're falling down to the ground that chances are if you've got petals that are infected 
that you will get some infection spreading to the rest of the plant. So we, that's why we can use um, certain tools as a prediction of sclerotinia, which would be like a petal test. We can collect the petals and plate them out and see if you get disease growing on the plates. Um, that is a method that has been used to predict the disease in the past. And uh, basically it, it does show that it's a good predictor that if you have petal infection that you'll get infection of the crops. So. Mm -hmm.